Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the French Revolution. So let's begin with some background. In 1789, French was, uh, France was the most advanced country uh, in Europe. It had the largest population of an overwhelming 25 million and had, it was also the wealthiest country in Europe. It also had better exports than Britain and than most of the European continent. French culture dominated the continent as well and it was the official France the French language was the official language of diplomacy and was also spoken in most European courts. France was the center of the 18th century uh, enlightenment as well and it led the science world. Additionally, it had the strongest military in Europe. Now let's take a look at the demographic splits in France. They were split up into three estates. The first estate was the clergy, which made up less than 1% of the population, but the Catholic Church in France owned 20% of the land. The, uh, they were not taxed, and uh, that was, yeah, that was about it. Um, the, next, the next estate was the second estate, and that's, that is the nobility. It makes up 2 to 4% of the total population, and they are also exempt from taxation. They owned about 25% of the land and enjoyed significant benefits um, <clears throat> after the, the death of Louis XIV in 1715. The third and final estate uh, consisted of few rich merchants, artisans, peasants, and unskilled workers, but they bore most of the taxes. The first tax they had was called the tie, which was a land tax. The next tax was a tithe, which was a ch uh, church tax. Additionally, they have an income tax, a poll tax, and a salt tax. They also have something called a corvée, which is obligations to work for nobles several days during the year without pay. And they also owned about 40% of all the land. So, moving on from there, we have causes of the French Revolution. Uh, first are some long-term causes. A long-term cause was the American Revolution. Uh, and that was because after they had spent massive uh, amounts of money to aid the Americans in their, uh, up, their revolution against the British, they had been sent into massive debt. Additionally, post-Enlightenment ideals lingered and they opposed the current government procedures. Some short-term causes for the French Revolution were the financial mismanagement under the reign of Louis XVI. Uh, during the reign of Louis XVI, France was nearly bankrupt. However, this time they could not declare bankruptcy. And so the only way with, uh, to make money with no central bank, no paper currency, and no means of creating credit was to increase the taxes. So he tried to increase the taxes on all classes. However, uh, the clergy was exempt due to their, their status as being religion. And the nobility just re flat out refused to pay the tax, leaving more taxes to be placed on the, uh, no, uh, the peasantry, which is why the unfair tax distributions and oppressive taxes and inflation is considered a short-term cause of the French Revolution. So now we have a look at the current government system they kind of had which was the Estates General, which was a feudal assembly that represented the three estates. It only met twi <clears throat> twice during its uh, creation, which was 1302 when it was made, and 1614. The three estates were excited because of this, this uh, very rare event, and they were asked to uh, make a Cahiers de Doliances, which is basically a list of complaints and suggestions that they would give to the king. Um, and they came to a common agreement, uh, and it was that the French should have a constitutional monarchy form of government, individual liberties should be guaranteed by law, and the, the position of parish clergy had to be improved, and the abolition of trade barriers should uh, be carried out. Um, a, main, a main issue with the Estates General was like how to divide three states and how the Estates General would vote. But basically, there were just uh, representatives, and so uh, the first and second estates could basically just outvote the third estate, and it was a really unfair uh, system. Now begins the French Revolution. 
having been upset with the unfairness of the uh, Estates General, as well as the aforementioned causes of the French Revolution, the National Assembly was made. On June 17th, the Third Estate declared itself the true Na National Assembly of France and was locked out of their meeting place by Louis the Sixteenth. and instead they met in an indoor tennis court, which is the beginning of the tennis court oath, where the Third Estate swore to remain together until it had given France a constitution, and therefore it assumed a, a sovereign power over the nation. Uh, the storming of the Bastille happened in July 14, 1789, and basically an uh, angry mob of peasants uh, stormed this, this ancient prison to get gunpowder, weapons, and uh, to, to basically just arm themselves for this revolution. Uh, next up, the National Assembly would make several great changes to the uh, system, uh, the, the governmental system of France. Uh, it declared equal equal taxation on all classes and, and also ended serfdom, which is basically just a glorified uh, slavery system. Next up, there was pushes for civil rights. A man named, uh, no, actually... The Declaration of Rights of Man and Citizen was issued in August 26, 1789, and became the official constitutional blueprint for France. And uh, citizen, the name citizen, or the title citizen, was applied to all French people regardless of class. And this was just for, like, equality, but it really just it served as, like, a cosmetic kind of deal. And... Uh, Something uh, that was also interesting was that uh, there were figures that pushed for the equality of women as well. Uh, Olympe de Gauche wrote the, the Rights of Women in 1791 and basically just advocated for uh, the same provisions as the Declaration of Rights of Man and Citizen. And then uh, additionally, an uh, Englishwoman uh, named Mary Wollstonecraft posted or pu published a vindication of rights of women in 1792, and her ideas were similar to de Gauche's, which just shows the uh, women's awareness of a push for equal rights. Uh, there were also some other governmental developments, which is the civil constitution of the clergy, and basically it secularized religion, and it created a national a church with 80, 83 bishops and dioceses. They also established a constitutional monarchy and a unicameral legislature. However, being having a being a constitutional monarchy uh, actually made the the power of the uh, Louis the Sixteenth weaker, and so he tried to go to uh, Varenne, which is a place near Austria, in order to kind of just stop this, this like, uprising of the peasants. And so in, in uh, June of 1791, Louis XVI tried to escape France, however, was basically intercepted due to him trying to take rests and, like, sleep. And then they were, then the, the royal family became uh, seen as traitors and were imprisoned. Some important figures were Edmund Burke, who wrote their reflections on the revolution in France, and it became one of the greatest intellectual defenses of the European conservatism. He basically condemned the barbaric, quote unquote, bar barbaric nature of the peasants' revolution and advised that it shouldn't, it, like, it shouldn't be that way. And uh, Thomas Paine is another important figure, and he wrote The Rights of Man, and he basically responded to uh, Burke's argument by defending the Enlightenment principles and France's revolution. So he was kind of the foil of uh, th those ideas. Next up, we have the Legislative Assembly, which was a new group of legislatures uh, that replaced the National Assembly. Basically, members of the National Assembly had agreed that no one in the group would take part in the new government, and the new government reflected the emergence of political factions in the revolution uh, competing for power. And so two of these major groups were the Jacobins and the Girondins, which basically were like a split branch of the Jacobins who believed in different ideals. 
during this time, the Declaration of Pilnitz was issued by Prussia and Austria due to uh, the Queen's current ties to Austria, or for her being having been from Austria. And the Prussia and Austria basically just tried to tell, uh, or also, uh, the French nobles who had fled France in the beginning uh, of 1789 had influenced Prussia and Austria to declare war on these people. But basically, they wanted the Austrian Emperor Leopold uh, to basically take over France and stop stop the uh, revolution from the outside instead of the inside, as uh, Louis XVI had failed to do. And this led to the War of the First Coalition, where the French Revolutionary Forces were soundly defeated by the Austrian military. And the, this is not really important, but they issued the Brunswick Manifesto, which basically just said if you hurt the royal family, they're going to destroy Paris. And so that kind of just shows its uh, ties again. The National Convention was the next kind of government that was to take power in France and replace the Legislative Assembly. And it was uh, proclaimed, uh, French was proclaimed a republic on September 21st, 1792. And uh, uh, that that actually their rule doesn't end up lasting long due to infighting, and basically, uh, the Mountain be- it becomes a new form of the of like radical Republicans, and they basically just oust the Girondins, and they become the leading force in France. Uh, one of the mountains was Maximilien Robespierre, and he goes on to create the Committee of Public Safety, which is the next type of government that uh, takes takes power in the in the Fr- French uh, French Revolution. And basically, uh, this like this this trend will continue, where like just new types of government takes power, and it's it's actually pretty important to know that. But this one was led by Maximilien Robespierre, and he was uh, heavily influenced by the ideas of Rousseau. And fanatically supported revolutionary idealism. He created the law of maximum, wherein he planned to uh, econo- an economy. Uh, he sought to a planned economy in response to food shortages and related economic problems. And here he would uh, have like people organize his armies. So Lazare Carnot re- reorganized, or probably Carnot, uh, reorganized the French army. And they had this thing called levy and mass, which is basically conscription and like a draft to get people to fight in the army. And that increased the size of the army to one million people. After this organization began the Rune Terror, which was one of the most notorious events in the French Revolution. Uh, the law suspect was passed and basically it said that any enemies of the revolution were would, would be brought to revolutionary tribunals, which are basically court cases. And if they were sentenced guilty, they would be executed. Queen Mary Antoinette was not exempt from this and was executed in October 1793. And about another 40,000 people would die here. Additionally, another 300,000 would be imprisoned. These executions slash imprisonments were largely indiscriminate in that 8% were noble, 14% were rich class or bourgeoisie, and 70% were peasants, and 6% were clergy, which is ironic because the peasants were... And so you were usually considered the most supportive of the revolution. However, with a lot of uh, allegations, there was just blind uh, trial, judge, jury, and execution moments that led to so many deaths and so many imprisonments. Next, uh, the next type of republic that would be made or idea that would be passed would be the Republic of Virtue, which was a political culture created under Robespierre to in, in, uh, incul- 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 inculcate uh, rev- revolutionary virtue, and so the cult of supreme being was introduced in June 1794, and it was a deistic natural religion in which re- the republic was declared to recognize the existence, the existence of a god and the immortality of the soul. Additionally, the Notre Dame Cathedral was turned into the Temple of Reason, and a new revolutionary calendar was introduced in late ni- 1793 to reduce all religious and ro- royalist influences on the calendar, and it was also an attempt to support the metric system. Uh, after after this, the Thermo, Thermo, Thermidorian reaction ended the reign of terror, and the Directory uh, took the stage. This this with the, the Directory came a new constitution and a new republican form of government. And this was a middle class controlled government. This 
didn't last very long, but it did contain a bicameral legislature, which could be argued to have been uh, influenced by the American form of government. And uh, after this, the basically, there was a coup d'etat brumat, which basically was led by uh, Napoleon, and that took us to the uh, Napoleonic era. Or, well, this is also the consulate era as well. That wraps up the French Revolution, and thank you for watching.